Ensure you have the correct training and certificates to operate all machinery by contacting your local provider or Lantra Awards. Ensure you also have the correct certificates to use relevant pesticides. Contact CRD if you're unsure. Check any restrictions for applying pesticides on land, for example, to triple SIs, cross compliance rules, agri-environment management schemes that may be relevant to you. You may need to seek prior permission before use. Plan your operation to avoid fording streams unnecessarily and observe all buffer zones that apply near ditches or watercourses. Check the ground conditions and weather forecast for the next few days. Do not apply when heavy rain is likely in the next few days. Choosing a good rain-fast product will reduce the chances of the active ingredient reaching watercourses. Help prevent damage to your non-target grass sward and give better weed control overall. You may also need to take account of heavy dew causing damage by runoff. Weed wipers use less chemical than conventional boom sprayers since the chemical is applied directly to weed foliage above grazed height. So it is well suited to grazing situations for weeds such as rushes, thistles, nettles and docks. Always see the product label for grazing restrictions. Weed wipers are less prone to drift than conventional boom sprayers, therefore reducing contamination to non-target environment and watercourses. Weed wipers are more suitable for rough terrain and slopes where boom sprayers can be more difficult to operate. Weed wipers can make use of root acting glyphosate, which potentially has much less impact on water quality than conventional boom sprayer chemicals, since it can decay in as little as two to three days. To collect your tractor mounted weed wiper, you will need to make sure that your tractor is compatible with the machine, making sure it has category two pins, a minimum oil flow rate of 50 litres per minute with twin spool valves, both of them double acting. You will need to check your clearances and tolerances against the cab and any hydraulic cables below, as well as making sure you've made allowances for overhead power lines. It's particularly important to make sure your transport locking bar is engaged for use on roads and tracks. Connect your hydraulic hoses, connect the cab electrics, Remove the transport bar and stow it. Activate the unfold and unlocking mechanisms for the transport locks. Once deployed, check the rotor levels and lower the hydraulic wheels. Once you're happy with rotor levels, deploy the hydraulic lock to stop the wheels floating. It's important to check rotor speed by using the marker on the rotor shaft. The optimum speed is 40 to 50 RPM for effective wiping. Once set, check for leaks on hoses, connections, tanks and nozzles in the system using clean water only. Remove the outer cover shield and check the spray pattern is okay and no nozzles are blocked. If nozzles are blocked, carefully remove them using PPE, wash them out and replace. At the same time, you can make sure the DCVs are working properly and the machine cuts out without tripping. If you're happy there are no leaks and controls are working properly, you are now ready for adding chemical and field work. So only use glyphosate with weed wipers. There are many glyphosate products on the market. Preferably choose one with good rainfast properties and aquatic approval for best results and added safety next to watercourses. Always check the product label for the PPE required and use as directed. Be sure to place a drip tray beneath the spray tank to connect any spillages. Have a chemical spill kit to hand and be sure to know how to use it. Contact your regional environment agency in the event of chemical spills entering the watercourse. Handling and mixing of the chemicals must take place on a suitable surface to contain any spillages or wash water. Treat spills and wash water through a lined biobed or filter. Preferably run washings onto target weeds via a weed wiper as part of the planned operation. Fill-in can be done in the field, providing it is done well away from springs, gateways, watercourses or bowl holes. Always follow the instructions on the product label when measuring and mixing and observe any exclusion intervals for livestock. These will also be on the label. Always use a clean water supply to stop jet nozzles blocking. Do not use water from a ground source 
such as a stream. Make sure the pesticides cannot run back or be drawn into any water supply. Use a double check valve or a physical separation of hose and tank. Whenever filling, monitor the tank and do not leave the tank filling unattended. For empty containers, refer to the product label for disposal instructions. If there are no instructions, triple rinse it with clean water, pour it back into the tank, do not pour it down any drains or sewers. Dispose of the container in line with current guidance, usually to a licensed waste disposal contractor. Return any unused chemicals to your secure store for future use. Choose an appropriate speed for the terrain and conditions in your field. Be prepared to alter the rotor height to optimise application to chemical on the weed. To avoid drips, adjust the in-cab controls to attain the desired frequency of pulse depending upon weed thickness. For example, set it at 99% for total weed infestation, going down to 75%, 50%, 25% or lower for lighter infestations. It is vital to get sufficient chemical deposited on the weed for good results. Generally, this means that the weeds need to be a minimum of 10 centimeters or four inches taller than the desired crop, but you should check the product label for particular recommendations. Weeds that are too short above the grass canopy may receive insufficient chemical and require repeat treatment as they grow later in the season. This is especially true for thistles, which are often present in the sward at varying heights, so it can be impossible to get them all in one pass. Remember that glyphosate will happily kill your grass too, so if you set rollers too low, you will damage your sward, not just your weeds. With very dense weed infestations, it is sometimes helpful to wipe the weeds from several directions to ensure coverage is adequate. Not forgetting the equipment tyres can transfer wet glyphosate onto non-target crops. With the right product, in good drying conditions, this is not too much of a problem. In damp conditions, you may need to travel in a single direction only and return some weeks later to treat weeds that were missed on the first pass. Left for three to four weeks or so, it is fairly easy to target areas which have not been treated. Target weeds should always be actively growing in order to take up glyphosate. Actual timing, however, may well have to be delayed when subject to some environmental schemes. For example, those protecting ground nesting birds. Remember, some degree of rush cover may be desirable habitat and total elimination is not always the goal. When wiping an area of low density, adjust the control box to a lower rate. It's worthwhile not filling your tank completely when you first start work and evaluate product use compared to weed density to help avoid the need for disposal of excess product mix. It will also make cleaning your equipment much easier at the finish. The override button allows the operator to top up the brush with chemical when it is considered necessary, for instance in a thick canopy. However, only use a quick six second top up to avoid dripping. Never constantly press a button as you will be applying far too much chemical mix. The resulting drips will cause sword damage. If dripping occurs, turn off the machine for a short time while still continuing to wipe, or potentially turn the control box down to a lower setting. Ensure you're using the correct application rate by referring to the product label. When you're finished, wash the tank out with clean water and ensure all pipes, nozzles and valves are thoroughly flushed. The tank washings are best wiped back onto the target weeds, so plan for this. Also, clean the outside of the equipment, including the vehicle and tyres, with clean water to remove any spray residue as this could cause pollution. Preferably, this will be done before leaving the treated field. A simple stirrup pump or similar device with clean water is ideal for this. But remember to be well away from gateways, watercourses or crop as the washings will contain active glyphosate which will damage the sward or watercourses if it is allowed onto them or into them. Alternatively, rinsing can be done back in the designated handling area where wash water can be contained. Ensure you are wearing the appropriate PPE and when finished is cleaned and properly stored for next use. Always consult the product label to find out the PPE required. Wash water should not be allowed to enter foul sewers, road drains, 
farm ditches or similar watercourses. Records of all pesticide applications should be kept for cross compliance purposes. Monitor results, but remember that seasonal treatments can be a quick fix that may need backup with a longer term strategy to be totally effective. Otherwise, your weeds will be back. Quite simply, it's good farming practice to consider the following in your war against rushes particularly. Maintain soil pH at an optimum to encourage grass growth, typically the H6 to 6.5. Pay attention to soil compaction, avoid it and correct it. Maintain your ditches. Avoid sward and soil structure damage from poaching or unnecessary field traffic. Reduce the chances of weed seed germination by avoiding overgrazing in the winter or undergrazing in the spring. Things like topping and reseeding can play their part in an overall strategy.